Have you ever been curious about what's going on inside of a KC off-road light? Well, if so, then you're in luck because in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the internal components of these two different lights. This one here is the gravity LED version of the iconic daylighter. And this is our flex LED dual light here. And no, I'm not gonna be opening up either of these lights with a saw because I'm actually gonna be giving away a pair of these gravity LED daylighters to one of you viewers. So I'll tell you a little bit later on how you can enter to win these, but stick around. I'm Taylor with KC, and this is the second video in a series that's designed to give you all of the information that you need to answer the question, what off-road light do I need? Now, if you missed the first video, go check it out. It's all about the different light sources comparing LEDs to HIDs to halogens. As I mentioned earlier, in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the different internal components of a couple of these different lights, and we're gonna discuss their form and their function as they apply to a bunch of different lights as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on tearing these lights down, then I'll show you some of the components as we go. So now that I have everything disassembled, we can start looking at the core components of an off-road light. So the first core component of, of an off-road light is the housing. So on our flex LED, you can see the housing here that all of the internals are stored in. And then on the daylighter, this is the housing here. Now the housing is responsible for keeping out all of the flying debris, dust, water, and making sure that all of the internal components, such as the light source, the reflector, all of that stays nice and clean and protected. For nearly all LED lights, the housing also acts as a heat sink. The heat sink works to move the heat that's generated from the LED chip away and moves it to the outside atmosphere using all of these fins. Off-road light housings are often made up of a couple different materials. One is either a durable polycarbonate material like is found on our KC Pro Sport lights, or in other cases made out of metal. And most LEDs are made out of an aluminum such as this flex. So next up is the reflector. Halogen and HID light sources are often called omnidirectional light sources because they throw off light in all different directions and create a full sphere of light around that light source. LEDs often throw light in one general direction. And because of that, reflectors are designed to capture all of that light and focus it into one area. So the reflector is what we're looking at here with the shiny surface around it. These are the reflectors of an LED, our flex LEDs. These are more of a conical shape. And this is the reflector in our gravity reflective diode system or our gravity LED. By carefully shaping this highly reflective surface, we are able to redirect and aim the light exactly where we want to put it. Now, the old school way of doing things was to have a perfectly smooth reflector and then rely on the lens itself, the outer lens, to do all of the aiming for us. More recently though, the reflector is responsible for both capturing and aiming all of the light rather than the lens itself. Generally speaking though, the larger the reflector, the more controlled and the more intense the light output is going to be. The bigger the reflector, the more shiny surface area there is inside to capture and redirect all of that light. Now we know that both depth and overall diameter of the reflector both play pivotal roles in controlling where exactly where we want that light to go. 
So by using bigger reflectors is how we take a light that may have the same number of lumens as a different light and create a better light by having more controlled and more precise and more intense light output. One of the big advantages of LEDs is the small amount of heat that's generated from them. Because there's so little heat, the reflectors for LEDs can be made out of a molded plastic material. By molding the reflectors out of plastic, we're able to create nearly endless shapes geometries, angles, and so on inside of the reflectors to allow for more control and more intensity out of the reflector design. So at KC, not only do we take a little bit of a different approach to LEDs by using larger than normal reflectors in our flex lineup, but in our gravity lineup, we also use our patented GRD or gravity reflective diode system. What the gravity reflective diode system does is takes your typical forward facing LED, which produces light in one general direction, and it aims it backwards at our precision designed reflector so that we're able to gain the most control and most intensity out of our gravity LED lights. So the final main component of an off-road light is the lens itself. So as you can see on our gravity light here, the lens is the outer clear covering, which is made out of a tough polycarbonate material. And on our flex, it's made out of the same material, but it's actually removable. Now the lenses are directly responsible for protecting against flying debris. So that's gonna protect your light source and your reflector from any rocks or dirt or wood or anything like that that's coming at it. As I mentioned before, Historically, the lens was what was used to manipulate the light itself and aim where we wanted the lights. And it did this by using flutes or lines in the lens itself. However, that often impacted the light output as it had much more distance to travel through that lens itself. So now by using perfectly clear lenses, we're able to maximize the light output from all of our different lights. So there you have it. That's basically all of the major components inside of an off-road light. We have our housing, we have our reflectors, and we have our lenses. It's pretty simple. It's actually not too complicated. So thank you guys so much for watching. And now with that, just a reminder, we are going to be giving away a pair of these gravity LED daylighters. And all you have to do to be entered to win is go below and drop a comment and let us know what you liked about this video and what you found useful or let us know what other types of videos you'd like to see from Casey in the future. Just as a reminder, this is our second video in a series that's designed to help you answer the question, what off-road light do I need? So stay tuned for more future videos in this series. Thanks guys, and remember to adventure further.